It's hot. It's about 105 degrees in the shop here right now. And I've got gremlins. I've got gremlins. So, you know, here's the thing, right? When you screw around with old cars, old motorcycles, tractors, doesn't matter what it is, right? You got to be prepared to screw around with these things. There's always work. There's always tinkering. There's always something that's going to go wrong. It doesn't matter how nice it is. So either you've got to be like, you've got to have like Jay Leno bucks where you can pay people to come and do all your stuff, or you better start digging in and learning and, and getting ready to turn the wrenches. It's just, the, it's the reality of it, you know? It, it's never as smooth and it is easy as it seems. So this is where we're at, right? So last night, I uh, I go to get on the Suzuki, my 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 GS 550 here, beautiful GS 550. I go to get on it to, to ride home, and uh, she doesn't want to start. I right? crank and crank and crank and crank and crank and right. Everything seems to be working properly, but she won't start. But I notice that as I take my finger off the start button, it kicks like it wants to go. Right? Do it again. Crank, 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 crank. Take my finger off the start button. Right? And that's it. That's all I'm getting. So she's only starting when I'm releasing the, the button. Now here's an interesting thing. That's actually, when you're dealing with a car, that's actually a telltale sign of a bad ignition switch, especially older Fords, right? That, that very common. So it, it'll, it'll crank, 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 right? But it won't do anything until you let go of it. And what it is, is it's a bad connection in the start, in the start circuit. So automotive ignitions have two circuits. They have start, turn the cue all the way, crank the starter, right? And at that point, it's sending full voltage to the ignition system also. And then there's run, where you get resisted with step-down voltage to the ignition system. So as I said, when you get that symptom with a car, where you crank it, crank it, crank it, and it'll crank, it'll go to start when you let off, typically it's going to be in the ignition switch. Motorcycles don't have a situation like that. Motorcycles have a, a an on-off switch, okay, and a starter button. And this bike also has a, a clutch safety button, but that has that doesn't interfere with the ignition at all. So you don't have that 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 crank circuit on a motorcycle. All you have is on and off, and then to energize the starter. That's it. So what could give us a circumstance like that well and this is why i'm doing this video because i think i think a bunch of you guys will find this interesting okay even if you're not really a car guy but you'll hear these phrases and oh, no, not a car guy you're not really a motorcycle guy but you'll hear these phrases and this is something that when guys make the transition from cars they know about cars and now they're starting to learn about motorcycles this is one of those things you know one of those systems on a motorcycle that's completely different than a system on a car and it has to do with the charging system and the stator specifically. So stator, that's nothing, you, you never hear the term stator on a car, but every car has an alternator and every alternator has a stator. So the stator is actually the generator, the act, the, it's, it's, the, it's the, the thing, the magnetic field that creates the voltage, it creates AC voltage. And inside your car's alternator, there's a rectifier, and what the rectifier does is it turns that AC voltage into DC voltage, which is what the rest of the car runs on. You've also got a regulator, and most alternators have the regulator built into the, you know, into the regulator, into the alternator itself, and some of them charge through the computer as an external regulator. Some of them have, have, a, have a, you know, older cars have an under hood mounted regulator. Newer cars, it's regulated through the computer, but either way, the, you, it's, those are the systems that make up an alternator. So on a motorcycle, the nature of a motorcycle is that everything needs to be as, as tight, light, and compact as possible. So to hang an alternator off of this thing, it, it, it doesn't, you know, you, you, there's no place to put it. Some bikes do have alternators, like for instance, like, like your bigger bikes, like Gold Wings have an alternator, right? Uh, it's, it's a car, it's a two-wheeled car. When you tell when you're talking about a typical motorcycle where everything is all scaled down, that alternator would take up a, a big, a giant portion of real estate. So what motorcycles have is a stator assembly that's actually inside the engine. And I have one over here I'll show you. So this is a stator, okay? So I guess you'll find this exact part 
inside your alternator. Well, not, not this exact part. You'll find this exact concept inside the alternator. And the rotor, which is where the magnets are mounted, so these are the poles, each of, each of these wound posts is a pole, and then there are magnets that rotate. It's like, for instance, um, if you're dealing with a, a Harley Davidson type of deal, it's the, you'll find the stator uh, under the primary cover, under the, the primary drive. So you'll, you'll take the chain off with the clutch basket and all of that, right? And that's where you'll find it at the, at the flywheel part, the crankshaft part of it, you'll find the stator. So, because the motorcycle has to be compact, and there's no room to put all of those components inside with the stator, they'll run the wires external and have what they call a regulator rectifier. So it's a term that like, you know, car guys all know the term regulator, but rectifier, you know, they don't deal with rectifiers because the rectifier is a part that's already built into the car's alternator. So when the alternator goes bad or the rectifier goes bad, it's just a bad alternator. So, but on a motorcycle, regulator rectifier is, is, and where is it on this one over here? Right here, here's, and it's already been replaced. This is the regulator rectifier. Okay. So now here's, here's another quirk of motorcycling or motorcycle uh, mechanics, all right? On the car, you've got the crank, you've got, you've got the start circuit, which gives a little extra juice to fire the plugs when anything is ice cold. And you've got the run circuit, which is resisted, it's stepped down. Motorcycle doesn't have a, a, a start circuit. What it does is it uses the stator to um, supplement the battery. So when the stator goes bad, what'll happen is you're cranking it, and even with a fully charged battery, the voltage drops down far enough that the CDI unit won't fire, won't trip the coils. You don't get a spark. If the, that's if the, so, the stator is actually supplementing the starter, the starter motor, and the battery to get this thing to light. If the stator goes bad, if the part of the stator, if 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 if, if the stator goes bad to where it's not charging at lower RPM, so like you could have it charging. Uh, full on at high RPM, but if the stator go, goes bad in such a way that it won't charge a cranking RPM, it's not going to start. And the telltale symptom to that is you're cranking it, right? You take your finger off the button, right? Or, you, or you, let's say you release the clutch handle, you know, uh, while it's cranking, and it'll go, boom, right? And then that's it, right? It'll only try to fire the plugs. So you just get that split second where the motor's still rotating the load from the starter is taken away, and that's when the CDI unit will get enough oomph to fire the plugs. So we've got to change the stator on this. And it's not, it's not a bad job at all. A lot of people are like, oh, I got to put a stator in it. Might as well junk that motorcycles. No, it's, it's really, it's not, it's not bad at all. It's just, it's under this, it's under this cover right here. So, and I got to, I have to, the clutch is a little sticky on this, the linkage, the clutch linkage. So I've got to get in there anyway and fix that. So that's it. The, the stator, the mystery motorcycle part, the stator and a regulator rectifier, the mystery motorcycle parts that car guys just are not familiar with. But you are familiar with them, you just don't realize it. One other thing, I'm gonna get people like, you know, are oh, you showing people how to steal stuff? You're, you're a criminal, right? No, the people who steal these things already know this stuff, right? I'm showing you guys this so that maybe perhaps you could protect yourself. This is, this is a glitch that's designed into all, all, like a lot of these motorcycles. They use, they use a fuse box or a fuse, uh, an electrical system. It's all very, very similar, okay? So uh, typically you would need the key to turn the ignition on, right? So you know, to, to, to energize the, the, the bike's electrical system and the ignition system. But on these bikes, some of them, right? Like this one right here, You'll see it's got, I gotta get this, uh, here we go. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I'm, I'm still, uh, here we go. So, yeah, this is the main fuse, all right? So this is battery voltage to the, to the whole system, right? Battery voltage, and actually it goes to the regulator rectifier. This is the headlight fuse. So if you, if, and like I said, the people who steal these things, they already know this. 
They've known this since the beginning of time. And this doesn't apply just to this bike. This is a very common thing. So keep this in mind. So if I wanted to start this bike and I didn't have the key for it, all I got to do is take the main fuse out and insert the main fuse right there. And you can see everything is on and the key is off. So I could, you know, let me, let me grab the clutch and hit the starter button. See, no key. <laughs> so there you go. If you have one of these bikes and you have a similar electrical system, you uh, you want to be aware of that and maybe uh, maybe do a little alternate wiring so that somebody can't just come over to your bike, pop the plastic cover off, swap that fuse, and it literally takes like less than you know. 10 or 20 seconds to do this whole thing and just ride your bike away so there you go i hope i saved you a loss so that's it guys uh let me get back to this thing take it all apart order it apart off amazon they're cheap the uh the the stator for this thing brand new off of amazon is like 40 bucks so you know that's one of the things with these older motorcycles they're a lot cheaper to deal with than than a lot of people you know realize that's it guys I'll see you tomorrow. I'm going home and cool off. It's hot. It's hot. Crazy hot. Bye. See you tomorrow.